What a good job you're doing there. <laughs> Gosh, this is the best dresser I've ever had. Thank you so much. It opens with the Lupercal, which is a sort of day of great wild festive celebration in the Roman calendar. The Feast of Lupercal is a really important catalyst for the whole play itself. You get this, this kind of drunken, mob fueled frenzy of excitement and positivity towards season. Just because it's a tragedy, that doesn't mean you've all got to start it looking po-faced and miserable. But the thing about the festival, that matches the whole atmosphere at the Globe, I think, because the Globe audience it is like a festival. Yeah. You just need that kind of punch in the face to get the action going and, and to kind of get the play moving. Just taking off my soothsayer makeup, I'm, I'm going in now as a servant to Octavius Caesar. And then I run off and come back on again as another servant who looks remarkably similar. Julius Caesar was very probably the first play produced at the First Globe in 1599. Political thriller, assassination thriller, conspiracy thriller. We thought a lot while we were making it about the paranoid conspiracy thrillers of the early 70s. Shakespeare is so acute and he's so true that he is always relevant. All the plays have relevance today. There's a, re there's a reason why they've survived so long. Partly because they're just good yarns, but secondly, with this play particularly, it absolutely has something to say about the world of politics. Crowds are sometimes carried by argument, but they're more often carried just simply by who's got the best direct emotional appeal. The essence of those people and, and their politics and their ability to win over a crowd is exactly the same. And you see that now, you see it a lot with television cameras, you know, which is some people can do television and some people can't do television. If you're being very passionate, that doesn't necessarily mean that people will believe you. If you're really contained, I think you're cold. There's so many factors and so you sort of have to navigate your way through it. It's a world of politics where people, you know, are deliberately slippery and ambiguous. That's the beauty of Shakespeare. He manages to be sympathetic to all his characters, really. There were five, maybe six cameras coming in and out the whole time, so sometimes you're right up in, a, in an actor's face. So the experience will be very similar to actually being stood in the yard. And then other times, you know, they'll be taking a wider tracking shot of the whole stage. Part of the pleasure of the glow is that wherever you watch it from, it's a very different experience. The sort of panning shots and moving around and going in and out of people's faces is incredibly cinematic. You can have the globe experience for the price of a cinema ticket. Putting the work out there to as wide an audience as possible can only be a good thing. I can't see the downside. Probably the most astute play about power politics that was ever written. Hugely simple, pulsing, exciting story. Experience five extraordinary new productions from Shakespeare's Globe at your local cinema. Globe on screen. The Duchess of Melfi, starring Gemma Arterton, Titus Andronicus, Julius Caesar, Antony and Cleopatra, and the Comedy of Errors. Spellbinding performances, an unforgettable cinema experience. For more information, visit globeonscreen.com.